That's why some people don't like me because I tell the damn truth. Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'm going to show you I've got a big shipment right here. I got some asbestos brakes and some warp rotors, brand new in the box. We're gonna put it on, and I'll, and I'll show you which we're, we're gonna put it on. But yeah, here we have the, the Kia. So we're gonna get in and we're gonna start it up. I can't get in, my hands are full. And presto, just like that, we're inside. Now this is, well, it's your typical Kia, but it is very clean. It's safety inspected, and it's got the, the manual shift. And it starts up really good. But uh, the only thing is, I don't know if you guys can hear this or not. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. It's, uh... hold on, I'm gonna be real quiet, all right? So, so you can hear this. I'm gonna break right now. I don't know how good it's coming up on camera, but the brakes are bad. I'm gonna do a stop here and watch. Watch the steering wheel. The steering wheel is shaking like crazy. We're gonna need to put some brakes on this. It sounds terrible. It's got 246, so it probably has the original brakes on it. And uh, once, once we get the brakes on it, the only other thing we're going to have to address on it is probably the, uh, the rear left has... Oh, you hear it now. And it's pulsating like crazy. And I'm up this hill right now. If you look at this hill right now, it's in neutral. And we're gently going back, but it's like I have the e-brake on when I don't. So we need to fix that. But the bra the bra fixing the brakes will fix that issue if it's just swollen rotors and pads and stuff like All that. Right, so I just got back. I took the tires off of the, the Kia and I got it supported with jack stands. And I got the wheel turned all the way to the to the left. This is just like my garbage metal pile. And there's the tire. And just some of the tools that you need. Now I painted it while the uh while it was off to make it look good and I just didn't want to get new black paint on the new rotor, so that's why I'm doing that. So I'm gonna take the caliber off, take the bracket off, and then I uh, will get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off these uh, the caliber itself from the bracket. Now we should be able to, to get that caliber right off. It's pretty crusty, but that's that's normal for these elements. Just full of crust and now before we go any further we're gonna make sure that our piston can be collapsed so that we know that we don't got a seized piston and right now I don't know if you can see this or not but the pistons going in really good pretty much all the way in so we know that, that that's good. Just hang the caliper off to the side here. Then we're gonna take off these, which I believe these are like uh, 17 millimeters. So that came off. They weren't, they were on there pretty tight. And that came off there pretty good too. Now we're gonna take our bracket off and take it off. So I mean, a couple things you wanna look at here is make sure that these pads come out, which they do. And they do. The only thing I guess we're left to do is 
we're gonna clean up clean up this bracket here that the pads slide in and out of so that they can slide in and out good and then uh, we'll be able to change out the parts and put the new stuff on so let me just clean this up. I clean this bracket up on the left side right side and uh, pretty much the new shim kit that comes with it doesn't fit but uh, we use the reuse the old one and uh, I'll show you what you want to do to check if you, if you have a bad uh, seized caliper pins, these right here won't move in and out like this. See how this has some spring to it? That means those are good. Now, this is the new rotor we're going on. It's got some packing oil. You can see the oil on my finger. We're not gonna clean that off just because it'll act as an anti-rust inhibitor. Now, there was a... Uh, dust shield here but I cut that part off because I know that that was going to rub against the rotor and these right here are the uh, asbestos brake pads that we're going to put on so we'll put the asbestos brake pads on and uh, these are the new old ones the old ones still had loads of pad life but they were they had some heat cycles so they got ruined so I'm going to uh, lube up the bracket for the pads and tabs and we'll put the uh, the rotor and the caliber on. So all I did was I put the pins on and uh, then I started it and uh, it seemed to work great. So pretty much you can see all these marks from hammering and stuff but those pins weren't lining up so I had to do that off camera. But now uh, you can see pretty much that it moves freely and, uh, and it's well lubricated. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side off camera and then uh, we'll tackle the rear. So I got the car. All, all swung around, everything like that, and uh, we're gonna take the rear brake pads off. So we're gonna do that now. So to get the caliper off in the rear, it's another 14 millimeter. And then it comes right off, just like that. Piston's compressed flat, so it's ready to be put back on again. Now it's another 14 millimeter. And I'm going to break it first. And now you can put your 14 uh, impact on it. And then this comes right off. And you can always tell that these are C's because you have to hit them out with a hammer. And those were seized in there so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and uh, I'm gonna get these slide pins greased and lubed and uh, we'll be ready but the, the hardest part here that I wanted to show you about the rear is is that this is has in uh, drums for the e-brake so we're gonna have to hammer that off with uh, a big hammer
and then she's off. And this is what I was talking about here about the brakes being uh, in. We hit the uh, brakes too far, so we're just going to go ahead and remove them all together. And that's how you remove the brake shoes on this. And if you're worried about getting like some rubbing and stuff on the dust shield, just hit it back like this. And then grab big pliers so that you can rip it off. And that's how you delete the uh, the dust shield. And then you're not going to have any problems with the dust shield scratching the rotor or anything like that. And that's that. So you can tell by this yellow writing that this bearing is actually a junkyard bearing. And like I said, we're not going to clean off the oil packing. We're just going to put it on because it acts as a rust protectant. And then you always want to test fit the rotor like this and turn it. And it looks like it's not making any noise. It's not catching on anything. So that's good. Clean up this bracket and uh, we'll put some new pads in. I got the pads in the bracket here and uh, if you look, they're moving freely on both sides. And then this, this all moving freely. Always put these pads on your bracket before you put it on the rotor so then you don't have to fiddle around with it. So I'm gonna put them on now. And then you can pretty much feel it. And then, and my pad just fell out. And then there's another thing that comes with the kit here. And that's these uh, these little V's that they go in the pad bottom and then they also go in at the top. There's holes in the pads to put them in. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but it always creates the pads to come away from the rotor when the brakes aren't applied. So we'll go ahead and we'll put this caliper on. Don't go too too hard on the uh, the slide pin bolts because they're very easy to break and then just give it a good spin and we know it's not making any contact so there you have it for the brakes I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheel on and uh, torque it all and then I uh, will take it for a ride I just torqued the wheels I just uh, checked all the brakes pumped them all up we're ready to go I always make sure that you pump up your brakes after doing a brake job because if you don't it might start driving away and something will happen all right that's good let's go so when you're road testing your vehicle after doing a brake job there's a couple things you want to uh you want to check one of those things being brake drag you don't want brake drag. You feel it right away. This is a manual, so when you put it in neutral, you can feel the drag. I don't feel the drag. So uh, I guess another thing we're gonna listen for is some noise. And uh, I don't hear anything abnormal. Vehicle's very quiet. I'm gonna go for like a 
a medium grade to hard stop here and we'll see if anything happens oh wow no pulsation no nothing this is great this is what you want to hear after you do a brake job like I'm listening for anything to happen that's abnormal and I'm not hearing anything at all we got the brakes done on this this is great there's only a couple little more things we need to do to this like uh, we need to change we need to fix some of the rust on the hatch and stuff oh my gosh sounds so good so good and that's that I'm gonna show you guys the uh, the rust that I need to get rid of right here this is rust, gotta get rid of that. And then on a, on a trunk here, right there, right there, and up top there. We're gonna get rid of that rust and uh, we'll do that next time though. But for now, you guys learned how to do your brakes and stuff. And in the meantime, I gotta clean up uh, brake pads and rotors and boxes. So I'll see you guys next time, peace.